Host for Old Dutch Cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, I tell you, the kid did kill that cop. In all my years on the force, I never saw a more open and shut case. I was afraid it was going to be like this, Matty. That's why I didn't want to give his mother any hope. Oh, it's a shame. He's everything she has in the world. That's the trouble, Patsy. Every time you catch a crook, some innocent person has to suffer. Well, I'm sorry for his mother, sure. But I'm sorry for the dead man's widow, too. And I'm not going to rest till I see that cop-killing little punk on his way to the electric chair. Now for the case of the wandering corpse. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Lefty Adams was always a bright boy, the type who learned quickly. At 12, he learned to steal bicycles, and that sent him to the state reformatory where he learned a lot more about crime from older boys. Now at 17, Lefty is convinced that only suckers work for a living. It's 3 o'clock in the morning on the lower east side of the city. A lone customer from Milligan's Bar and Grill is making his uncertain way homeward. As he passes a dark doorway, a figure quickly steps in behind him, locks his arm around his neck, and pulls him back into the shadow. Just keep quiet, Mac, and you ain't gonna get hurt. I said keep quiet, didn't I? Hey, that's quite a roll you got there. Thanks. Now look, Tom, I ought to conk you one, but I'm soft-hearted, see? I'm lambing out of here, but I got a rod, and if you let out one yipe, I'm coming back. You're going to be good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So long, sucker. Help. Help. The dirty rat I might have known. Hey, you. It's the cops. He ain't going to get me. Stop. Stop or I'll shoot. I ain't got far to go now if I can only... Oh. <laughs> My boy, Lefty, shot that policeman, Mr. Carter. They say he's a murderer. Try to stop crying, Mrs. Adams. Nick will help you if he possibly can. Won't you, Nick? I'd certainly like to, Patsy, if I could, but... I got no money, but but I'll work. It takes 20 years. It isn't the money, Mrs. Adams. The fact that Lefty ran away. Why wouldn't he run away with every cop in town looking for him, ready to shoot him on sight? Oh, no, they wouldn't do that. And hurt, too. That's what the papers say. Maybe he's dying. But why did you come to me? You knew Lefty when he used to go to your downtown boys' club. Yes, I did. Well, then you know he's a good boy. No, Mrs. Adams, I don't. I don't think he's a really bad boy, but he was always a little defiant and suspicious. Well, that's no crime. I know. I did what I could for him in the short time he was a member of the club, but he didn't stay long enough for me to straighten him out. Well, he never meant any harm. It was them, them older boys he got mixed up with afterwards. Well, that's usually the way. Lefty has a pretty bad record, Mrs. Adams. Nick, why don't you at least investigate? I'll be glad to, but if I start, I'll have to go through with it, whether he's innocent or not. Well, that's all I want, Mr. Carter, because I know he didn't do it. And, of course, if I find where he's hiding, I'll have to turn him over to the police. Well, if that's the only way. All right, then, go ahead. <laughs> Nick, I tell you the kid's guilty. In all my years on the force, I never saw a more open and shut case. Look, Matty, will you tell me again just exactly what happened? It's a simple case, Nick. Officer O'Malley caught this lefty Adams rolling a drunk. The kid ran and O'Malley warned him to stop, but he didn't. So O'Malley fired and hit him, too. Then the kid turned and shot O'Malley with that homemade gun we found near the body. A homemade gun, Sergeant? Yeah, Patsy. A lot of these young hoodlums make their own out of scrap metal and stuff. Oh. And three people have identified the gun that killed O'Malley as his. Any fingerprints? Sure. All belonging to Lefty Adams. Oh, Nick. That's almost positive proof. Yeah, that's pretty strong evidence. And that's right. only part of it, Nick. The drunk got a good look at Lefty when the kid ran under a streetlight. 
And he's identified his picture. But he didn't actually see Lefty fire the shot, did he? Well, Patsy, considering the shape he was in, he ain't sure of anything except that the kid was Lefty Adams. Oh. <laughs> Matter of fact, he remembers hearing only one shot, and we know there were two. You mean because there was an empty cartridge in O'Malley's revolver? Sure. And we know the kid was wounded because there was blood on the pavement a half a block from O'Malley's body. We've sent out warnings to all doctors to watch for a 17-year-old boy with a bullet wound, probably in his left arm. But what makes you think he was hit in his left arm? Because, Patsy, the fingerprints on his gun are from his right hand. Uh-huh. And Lefty is a southpaw. Oh. oh, I see what you mean. Left arm must have been injured. Or have held the gun in his left hand. That's the way I figure. Oh, I was afraid it was going to be like this. That's why I didn't want to give Lefty's mother any hope. Oh, it's a shame. She has so much faith in him. That's a trouble, Patsy. Every time you catch a crook, some innocent person has to suffer. Well, I'm sorry for his mother, sure, but I'm sorry for O'Malley's widow, too. And I'm not going to rest till I see that cop-killing little punk on his way to the electric chair. <laughs> O'Malley's stuff, Nick. His uniform, gun, nightstick, everything he had on him. Mind if I look it over? No, no, go right ahead. Sergeant. Yeah, Patsy. Didn't you say that Officer O'Malley had been dead for about an hour when he was found? Yeah. When the drunk heard the shooting, he went for help. But he was so loopy, it took him a long time to find another officer. Then he got lost trying to find the place again. I see. Didn't anybody in the neighborhood hear the shot? Well, you see, nobody uses that street much at night. There's a factory along one side of the block, and the other side is all little stores and things. Uh -huh. Only one person lives in the whole block. Oh? Who's yeah. that? An old lady who lives in the back of a second-hand store she runs. She heard the shot, but didn't pay any attention. Hey, Mary. Yeah? Didn't it rain shortly after midnight last night? Uh, yeah, for a while. I should think the street would have been wet. It was, sort of. Why? There's dust in the back of O'Malley's uniform. Oh, he must have ducked in the doorway to get out of the rain and lean against a dirty wall. Yeah, it could be. Well, he didn't get it when he fell because he was lying on his face, Nick. And there's something else about this coat. What? Huh? O'Malley was shot in the left side of the chest. There's also a blood stain on the right shoulder of the coat. Say, that's right. wonder how that got there. Search me. Uh, do you think that second blood stain means anything, Nick? Well, I... I don't suppose so, but for the sake of the boy's mother, I'm not going to give up until I know the reasons for everything. Well? Come on, Patsy, let's go down to Meacham Street and give the scene of the crime the once over. Ah, <laughs> oh, here's the second hand store Manny was talking about. Let's go in for a minute. All right. Just a minute. I'll be right out. Okay, we'll wait. Take your time. Oh, gee, I love secondhand stores, Nick. Look, everything from jewelry to automobile tires. Phew. <laughs> Painting walls is no job for a fat woman. <laughs> well, what can I do for you? My name's Carter, and this is Miss Bowen. Well, pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Hello. I want to ask some questions about the shooting that took place near here last night. You heard the shots, didn't you? Yep. They woke me up. The window was open wide because of the fresh paint smell in the room. How many shots were there? Why, uh... Two was all I heard. You sure there were only two, not just one? Well, there was two, all right. Of course, I didn't know it was guns. I thought it was some car backfiring. Well, what time was it, did you notice? Well, when the police was here, they told me it was about three. But I didn't look at the clock when I heard the shot, so, well, I wouldn't know myself. Well, did you hear anything else? Yeah. Yeah, I heard somebody run down the street right after that. Uh-huh. Well, thanks very much. Sorry, we had to interrupt your painting. Oh, that's all right. Don't mind a bit. All right, come on, Patsy. We have to make another stop in this neighborhood. Where's that, Nick? Well, this won't be pleasant. But we better stop in and tell Mrs. Adams what we learned from Maddie. This is the right block, Nick. Must be only a few houses farther on. Hey, Patsy, get back in the doorway, quick. What's the matter? Mrs. Adams. She just came out of that house down the street. So what? There's something odd about the way she's acting. Looking over her shoulder as if she were afraid of being followed. Let me see. Hey, you're right. She acts scared to death. And look at those bundles she's carrying. One of them must be clothes. 
She's also got something in a paper sack. That might be food. Nick, she's getting into a cab. So I see. A woman like Mrs. Adams can't afford a cab except for something very important. Come on. Yep. Taxi. Too, bud. Follow that cab up ahead. There's a tax spot in it for you if you don't lose him. Oh, mister, you can say goodbye to that soft bus right now. But me. I may be wrong, Patsy, but it looks to me as though Lefty may have gotten in touch with his mother and that she's taking him food and clothing. Oh, but Nick, it would be awful to use that poor woman as a means of, of finding her boy and turning him over to the police. I know it, Patsy, but I said I was going to follow through on this case even if what I find sends Lefty to the chair. <laughs> Yeah, I see him. Hold back for a minute. Okay, you're the boss. Just getting out and going into that old house, Nick. All right, driver. Let us out at the same house. Right. Maybe I shouldn't feel this way, Nick. But I hope Lefty isn't there. I'd rather the police caught him than us. There's nothing to be sentimental about, Patsy. I know. Here's your ten spot, driver. And wait for us. Sure. <laughs> Come on, Patsy. Let's see where Lefty's mother goes. <laughs> Mrs. Adams? I hope you're wrong, Nick. Mrs. Adams? What? What do you want? It's Nick Carter. Let me in, Mrs. Adams. I... Go away, please. Please. Oh, what's the use, Mom? Okay, so you found me. Now I hope you're satisfied. He didn't do it, Mr. Carter. He couldn't have. Lefty, tell him he didn't kill anybody. Gee, I'm oh. sorry, Mom. I can't. I did shoot that cop, just like the paper said. Nick, look at the wound on Lefty's hand. Oh, yes, I noticed it. But I thought... So did I. Mom, will you... Maybe we've been all wrong. While Lefty's heartbroken mother sobs convulsively, Nick and the 17-year-old criminal leave for headquarters. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to the case of a wandering corpse. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Lefty Adams has admitted killing Officer O'Malley, but Nick still wants to clear up a few points. So after delivering Lefty to headquarters and waiting while a doctor attended to Lefty's wound, he now questions Lefty in his cell. How are you feeling, Lefty? Docs will fix you up all right? Yeah, Sure. I didn't expect to find you with a head wound. Oh, it wasn't nothing. The bullet just creased me. From what I understand, it was a pretty deep crease. Another fraction of an inch to the right, and you wouldn't be here. Why couldn't O'Malley have shot straighter? Why couldn't it have been me instead of him? I never wanted to kill nobody. And why did you carry a gun? All the other guys had a knife or a rod, and I wanted to show them I was tough, too. Hefty, were you mixed up with the gang? No. There's been a lot of petty crime in your neighborhood lately. Stick up, smugging, automobile stripped. And it looks as though there might be some kind of organization behind it. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Let's talk about Officer O'Malley. I said I shot him, didn't I? What more do you want? There are a couple of things I don't understand. I ain't saying nothing till I see my lawyer. They haven't appointed anyone to defend you yet, have they? They don't have to. I'm getting J.B. Fenton. J.B. Fenton? <laughs> You'll find he costs a lot of money, Lefty. I'll get the dough, all right. I got friends, see? Friends? Would be willing to put up five or ten thousand dollars? Maybe more? Sure. Why not? Well, I didn't know you traveled in circles like that. Look, Mr. Carter, will you leave me alone, please? Ain't I got enough in my mind? Mom crying her eyes out and me knowing I killed a guy? It's enough to drive a guy nuts without, without having to keep talking about it. All right, all right, Lefty. Just a couple of more questions and I'll leave. You're left-handed, aren't you? Yeah, sure. What do you think they call me lefty for? And why did you hold the gun in your right hand when you shot O'Malley? I didn't. I couldn't have. I, I couldn't hit nothing with my right hand. But the fingerprints on that gun are from your right hand. I, I, quit nagging at me, will you? How do I know why I done it? I, I shot him, but I don't know how it happened. There was a million skyrockets going off inside my head. You mean from the bullet wound? <laughs> yeah, I blacked out, maybe. All I remember is him chasing me into the... Uh, what were you going to say? Nothing. Leave me alone, will you? I 
don't want to talk about it. But, Lefty, listen I to me. I told you I killed the guy, didn't I? That's all I know. Now get out of here and let me alone. Just let me alone. <laughs> I've been waiting here in this taxi for over an hour. I thought you were never coming. Took longer than I expected, Patsy. Oh, downtown driver. Corner of 4th and 5th. Right. Did you find out anything? I found out that Lefty's lying. He's lying? About what? I'm not sure. It's almost as if he were taking the blame to protect somebody else. Well, he wouldn't do that. I wouldn't think so either, but that's the way it looks. Another thing, it doesn't seem to be the actual shooting he's lying about. Well, what is it then? Oh, I don't know, Patsy. It doesn't make sense. There's something wrong somewhere. Hey, mister, was that kid we brought down the clink the one, uh, the one that bumped the cop last night, huh? Yes, he's the one. Hey, you know, it's a funny thing. I almost seen that fracas. What do you mean you almost saw it? Well, it happened in my territory. You know, I picked you up only a couple of blocks from there. Yes, I know. Yeah, well, well, like I was saying, I drove through the street where the kid killed the cop about half an hour before it happened. About 3.30 it was. What? Sure. The paper said the cop's body was found about 4 o'clock. And I went through there not half an hour before. You sure you drove through that same block on Meacham Street this morning at 3.30? Yeah, sure, I'm sure. I picked up the fare right after that and I got it down on my book. 3.37. Well, maybe your watch was wrong. Ah, nuts. This ticker of mine ain't been off two minutes in ten years. What are you so psyched about? Because it was 4 o'clock when they found the body. But the killing took place at 3. Ah, you are nuts. If that cop was laying dead in the street, I'd have seen him, wouldn't I, huh? You bet you would. Turn around, driver. We're going back to headquarters. But the body must have been there at 3.30, Nick. He was shot at 3, and corpses don't go wandering around while they're waiting for somebody to find them. That's why I'm taking another look at O'Malley's coat, Matty. I hope it'll tell us where the body really was. Just because there's a little dust on the back of it? Not entirely. Matty, take another look at this stain on the right shoulder. Oh, Nick, we've talked about that before. I admit it's a funny place for a blood stain. When he was shot on the other side... Well, if you take a closer I... look, you'll see that the blood stain isn't dried blood at all. What? On this dark blue cloth, it's hard to tell the difference. But that particular stain is paint, Matty. Brown paint. <laughs> Mr. Carter and Miss Bowen again. Oh, come right in. Thank you. Still fixing the place up, Mrs. Trimmett? Yeah. Oh, like they say, woman's work is never done. Huh. You know, these shelves clear up to the ceiling is nice, all right, but, oh, they was never made to hold the heavy junk that collects in a second-hand store. So today you're a carpenter instead of a painter. Well, I just thought I'd put in a couple of nails to hold them to the wall. You know, these shelves was ever to tip over, it'd be worse than Pepper McGee's closet. <laughs> uh, where does all this stuff come from? <laughs> Well, people bring it in and sell it to me like at any second-hand store. Boys like Lefty Adams? I... I don't get you. Wonder what would happen, Mrs. Trimmett, if the police checked your stock against the list of watches and auto accessories and other things that have been stolen in this neighborhood lately. Oh, if you're insinuating... You think they'd find out that you've been acting as a receiver of stolen goods for a gang of young hoodlums? You ain't got no right to talk to me like that. Why else would Lefty Adams come here to hide when the police were after him? He never did that. Oh, yes, he did. And you let him in. And Officer O'Malley was shot here in this store, not outside on the street. He was not. I don't know anything about it. You can't get away with it, Mrs. Trimmett. When O'Malley fell, the back of his coat picked up dust from your floor. Oh, that don't mean nothing. Could have got that dust any place. But there was something else on his coat. Paint. The fresh paint you put on your walls only a few hours before. I... Oh, okay. I'll tell you the truth. It did happen in here. When the kid come knocking on the door, I thought he'd been in an accident. Blood on his face and everything, so... Well, naturally, I let him in. Go on. Then when the cop come, come busting in after him, the, the boy grabbed a gun out of his pocket and... Oh, it was awful. Very interesting story, Mrs. Trimmett, but I have a better version. Huh? Lefty came here because you were partners with every young thief in the neighborhood, buying the things they stole. How'd I know they were Wait stole? Wait till I finish. Lefty fainted as soon as you let him in. You were afraid O'Malley would know why he came to you, so when he followed Lefty inside, you shot him with the boy's gun while Lefty himself was unconscious. It ain't my fingerprints that's on the gun, it's his. That'll prove who done it. How did you know there were any fingerprints? Well, I... I, I I'll tell you how you know. Because after you killed O'Malley, you wiped off the gun, pressed it into Lefty's hand, and when he came to, told him he'd done the killing. You can't prove that. You can't prove a thing. Oh, yes, I can. Because you made a very serious mistake, Mrs. Trimmett. You put the prints of Lefty's right hand on that gun. If he'd actually done the shooting, he'd have used his left. I... 
I... I... Well, y- y- you see, Mr. Carter... Nick, look out. She's pushing those shelves over. Out of the way, Patsy. Out of the way. <laughs> you ain't hurt, are you? No. No thanks to you. Nick, she's got a gun. Sure I have. So I pushed them shelves over. Keep you too busy long enough for me to get it. Now, mister, just toss your rod over to the opposite side of the room. All right. Anything to oblige a lady? Hmm. But remember, you're still trapped in this door with us. The factory across the street is changing shifts. And the street is full of people. Think you can get through that crowd without being caught? Who said I was leaving? Go on, both of you. Get to the back of the store. Say, what do you think you're doing? Well, dearie, there's a cellar to this joint that ought to be darn near soundproof. We all three are going down there. But I'm the only one that's coming back. Now get moving. At the point of a gun, Nick and Patsy move slowly toward the door of the cellar, which Mrs. Trimmett intends to be their grave. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of the case of the wandering corpse. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Nick and Patsy are slowly walking toward the rear of Mrs. Trimmett's second-hand store. With Mrs. Trimmett right behind them, a revolver in her hand. Nick, once we get into that basement, we won't have a chance. You can do something to distract her attention for a minute. Cut up the whispering can... and go on down those steps. Please don't rush us. Whenever you're ready, Nick. I said shut up. Now. Oh, I caught my heel. Oh, oh, you fool. Don't you give me the gun. I'll give it to you. I, you. Let go of my arm. We'll fall. I think we'll fall on the stairs. Oh. Oh. All right, Patsy. I've got the gun. You dirty rat. You broke my arm. Knocking me down them steps. Oh, that's a shame, Mrs. Oh. Trimmett. But we'll see that you get the very best medical attention in the prison hospital. Nick, what gave you the idea that Mrs. Trimmett killed Officer O'Malley? That taxi driver, Patsy. Huh? When he said the body wasn't lying in the street at 3.30, half an hour after O'Malley was shot. As Maddie said, a corpse just doesn't go wandering around. Yeah. So I figured the killing must have taken place somewhere else. But what made you decide it happened in Mrs. Trimmett's store? Because she was the only person who lived in the block, and therefore the only person who could have been there at that time of night. Oh, so that's the only place left he could have found shelter. That's right. And I also remember that other stain on O'Malley's coat and the brown paint Mrs. Trimmett had been using on her walls. So you checked and found it was paint on the coat. Right. And then everything fell into place. Mm -hmm. All that junk in her store, the same type of things that had been stolen in the neighborhood, provided me with a reason why Lefty might have thought she'd help him. Well, he went to her because she was a, well, a sort of partner in crime. Exactly. And if we assume that, it was easy to reconstruct the whole thing. I see. Lefty admitted that he'd passed out and didn't remember shooting the officer. Mm -hmm. Then there was the fact that the fingerprints on the gun were from his right hand. That suggested a frame-up. I suppose Mrs. Trimmett dragged the body out into the street. With Lefty's help. Of course, she also bribed him into saying the murder happened out in the street by promising to pay for the best lawyer in town in case he were caught. So that's why he didn't want to bring her name into it. By the way, what's going to happen to Lefty? Oh, I'm trying to get him paroled to my custody. Oh. Then you think Lefty has really learned a lesson this time? I do. He's promised to go straight from now on. And I believe him. Well, I'm glad. For his mother's sake as well as his own. So am I, Patsy. Oh, incidentally, that was a beautiful fall you took down those cellar steps. You should have been a stunt girl for the movies. Well, thanks, Nick. And that reminds me. I have a little expense account here. Oh? What for? For one dollar and twenty-five cents. The price of one large sized bottle of liniment. <laughs> Now, Nick, will you tell us something about the adventure that new post-war old Dutch cleanser is going to bring us next week? Well, Bob, for one thing, it's a case that really started 1,300 years ago in China during the Tang Dynasty, when two Chinese families started a feud over a dagger. Hmm, must have been a very unusual weapon. It certainly was very unusual and very deadly, as Nick and I almost discovered the hard way. Well, it sounds like a case that promises lots of excitement, to say the least. Uh, what do you call the adventure, Nick? I call it the case of the Kwong Lee Dagger. (laughs) 
Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Matty was played by Ed Latimer. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. And don't forget to read the Nick Carter story on murderer's guns in the current Black Mask magazine, one of the popular fiction group. Bob Martin speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.